Indeed, me, Scotty McClue, nine o'clock on Thursday evening. Nothing gets past me. And a very, very, very warm welcome to you. And a big warm welcome to all our beautiful TikTokers. We've just popped up on TikTok. We're also live on YouTube. We're live on Twitch, Scotty underscore McClue. We're live on Facebook. How lovely to have all you Facebookers with us. And a big dinky do to you, I say. You're watching Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet, with the internet phone in. And we're just going to dash off to the telephones right now and find out who's ringing. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Thank you, dear Scotty. Ah, you? dinky do, Kareem. Lovely to have you with us. Well done for getting on first again. Thank you, Scott. That's amazing. And I believe we've got football tonight, somebody told me. Yes, Celtic are playing. They're not winning at the moment. Yes, they're not. They were, they're getting absolutely sorted out. And the problem is, uh, who are they playing, Kareem? Oh, I've forgotten to say, one of the four, uh, foreign teams. Right. I can't remember them. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're doing our phone in, and that's what matters. Lovely to have you with us. And how are we tonight? Well, I'm going to be pretty honest. I was quite angry and upset earlier on Scotty. Uh -huh. um, I can be quite passionate as you know when it comes to having a debate about independence and the referendum. Well I think you're a very passionate man and I think you're you love Scotland and you love people and you don't like injustice and yeah. you're a compassionate man and all these things mean that you can get quite heated if you see somebody not getting a fair crack at the whip. Well I, there was a, a comment earlier on, um, and it was no matter what I was saying, it was being twisted, thrown back at my face. And I actually, I know it sounds really funny, but I was putting a lot of facts down and they were just dis, uh, dismissed. You know, somebody, one person did raise a good point and it was totally laughed at about the Scottish economy. It's worth about, they said, about 205 billion a year. Uh -huh. We send down at least 60, 70 mil, uh, billion in revenue. About, about 70, that. 75 billion gets sent to Westminster every year. Yeah. But you've got to remember that Westminster over the years, the Westminster propaganda machines have stuffed people's heads with thinking that they subsidise Scotland. Well, this poor woman, all I can say, just kept going on about you cannot Scotland would never be able to go it alone. We're not rich enough. This, that, and the next thing. And I just thought all that delusional. rubbish. You just ignore all that. Yeah, delusional. And I said, I put down a wee comment. Did well they call you delusional? Uh, they not delusional. They they basically said I was a a nationalist. That I, I've been brainwashed and all. No, that. no, all that rubbish. No, never mind all that. Now the thing is. Let's take the politics out of it and look purely at the economics. Scotland could be a very, very, very successful country. See, Scotland, Kareem, has yeah. always been independent except for a 313-year blip, you see. And uh, when, I, I, I think I've said this before. When uh, Queen Anne was jiggery-pokerying, so it was a Stuart that jiggery-pokeried the whole union thing, and it was jiggery pokery. You know, it's built on sand and it's bribery, it was corruption, it was all that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, people stabbing themselves in the back, stabbing Scotland in the back to get a few quid. The whole of Scotland, I think, was sold for, I can't remember, but it was somewhere around a couple of hundred quid, you know? Yeah. Now, the, the, the thing is that uh, when Queen Anne was doing all that, Scotland, when they merged the economies, had to seriously, seriously, seriously devalue its currency to try and fit in with the English currency. Right. You know, and still to this day, and another thing we got robbed, we had about um, 300 Scottish members of parliament, and when they merged, 45 to the Commons, 16 to the Lords. Okay. You see, so tut, 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 tut. Yeah, it's not equal. No, no. And, and, and it should be 50 50. So there should be no Boris Johnston telling Nicola Sturgeon what to do. 
there should be discussions going on between the pair of them, realizing, taking the responsibilities seriously. And Boris saying to Nicola, Sturgeon, now, Nicola, listen, you know, you're 50 50 in all this discussion, so I can't really move without you. Well, I think I was just really quite annoying that I kept saying, provide evidence from the SNP that we're going to be economically better. And I just you don't need to provide evidence. The evidence is there for a start, yeah. Kareem. For starters, we would be, uh, what do we give? Uh, I think we get 28 back. So let's just say um, we'd be 45 billion better off, 47 billion better off right away. And I don't understand how people can understand that. You know, right away, there'd be another £47 billion pounds straight into the Scottish coffers. Yeah, into the port. Yeah. You know, within five years, everything would be so much different if they had that money coming, extra money oh. coming in every year. Well, you took 45 over. You know, I mean, you've got £220 billion in five years without doing anything. Now, yeah. once we start talking to the EU, saying any chance of a seat at the big table? Yeah, yeah. I understand that. I know it will happen. It will definitely happen. Well, Scotty, I knew you would uh, talk some sense into it because it really got me. I don't normally get quite annoyed about no. these things, but I just felt... No, but remember, these people probably don't have a tenth of your ability or your knowledge. Thanks. So they're really, really struggling. So it's easy to poo-poo. I mean, when I come out with anything intelligent, people go, wow, what a rubbish you talk. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have the capacity to understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, they make up gibberish. Yes, right. they'll just make up gibberish because that's the level they're at. Now, that does worry me. These people do worry me because they're the kind of people that uh, caused Brexit. And that argument actually said, uh, what proof do you have that Brexit's been bad for the UK economy? And I just said, I rest my case. Because I rest my case. The UK at the moment is £350 billion down the Swanee. £250 billion of that is Brexit. And we've, we've, we've ramped that up for no reason. I don't like the term ramped up. I'm very against it. But that's what's happened. Yeah. Run it up, I should say. We've accrued that debt for no reason. Correct. And if you look at the, the shortage of drivers for petrol, yes. the shortage that we have in our supermarkets, yes. the, the, a lot of workers that have went back to Europe, there is a big impact. Um, my second point, Scotty, I don't know. I was a wee boy at this time. I think I would have been about two. Mm -hmm. And it's going back, I think it was 1983. Yes. And it, was, it came on my Facebook earlier on. I actually watched the interview and I found it very interesting because I've never seen, um, and I know some people are going to be booing in the background here, but it was Margaret Thatcher. Yes. And she was, it was a, a big interview and it was about the Falklands War and it was this teacher absolutely quizzing and I can't remember her name, but it was voted one of the best interviews from the 80s, uh, it was to do with the Falkland War, yes. that they shot down a ship, and I don't know all the ins and outs. Well, they didn't shoot it down. What they did, they sank the General Belgrano, which was a very elderly battleship, and it had, um, it had uh, you know, a huge number of Argentinian sailors on it, and it was very slowly, allegedly, moving away from the exclusion zone under power. Yeah, and the okay. submarine, the Conqueror, sank it, and of course Thatcher would have had to have given that order up, that order yeah. out. Right. You know. Yes. And what they were saying in an interview, this teacher was hammering her, but Margaret Thatcher turned around and said, uh, the, "The the time they got the, the communication back, which was about fourteen hours after." They sank the ship that there was some type of deal. It was 14 hours afterwards. Uh, so she was maintaining that 
she was uh, looking after the Navy boys. She was looking after her boys, as she kept saying, it's my responsibility, and we took that opportunity. It was really interesting, Scott. I'm sure you have. Well, it's it. very interesting. I mean, it, I mean, the Belgrano incident's huge. You know, I mean, uh, you know, MPs. Have you ever heard of Tam Dale? Not, no. Right, Tam Dale was a teacher, I think he was a mathematics teacher, he was an aristocrat. He could trace right. his lineage back to General Tam Dale. Yeah, the house of the bins in uh, in West Lo in uh, West Lothian or Mid Lothian. And, uh, you know, General Tam Dale. Tam Dale was a, a, a remarkable Labour MP, very highly intellectual. And when he died, I think it was Tony Blair that said he opposed every bullet that we fired, you know? And uh, Tam Dale questioned everything that was going on. He would question about the Belgrano, and there was a, a civil servant who, I think he's passed away now, but he wrote a book about it because he sort of blew the whistle on the whole thing and ended up uh, getting sent to prison, I think. A very senior civil servant, you know, ended up getting sent to prison. Uh, because they had to keep everything quiet about what the whole procedure was on the sinking of the General Belgrano. Right, okay. Well, as I said, I she was a very elderly I battleship. I don't think she was firing any shots in anger, and she was yeah. making her way away from the exclusion zone. But, uh, you know, we have, in Thatcher's defence, we did have some serious losses in the Falklands with HMS Sheffield Exocet missiles. So, you know, that, maybe that, they that didn't want sunk, to take yes. a chance. That was sunk, yes. You know, that sort of thing. So, the, you know, and and uh, uh, the, there was quite a few problems out there at the time. Uh -huh. You know, and some oh, people uh, backed Thatcher sending the fleet. Others said she shouldn't have. But then, uh, you know, it, the, we wouldn't have been able to free the Falkland Islands, which do belong to this day to Great Britain. Yes, well, just like it's <laughs> the Rocky Gibraltar, isn't it? That's part of yeah, well, yeah. So, I mean, you do have to defend your territories, and um, what Thatcher was doing was harking back to the likes of Lord Palmerston, who was, uh, in 1841, I think the foreign policy was gunboat diplomacy. So if, uh, you know, some sort of town or village, um, anywhere in the world wasn't doing what Britain said it should be doing, they would send a gunboat to sit in the bay and threaten to fire on the town. Okay. Gunboat <laughs> diplomacy, yes. Yes. Um, but I just found, I never really knew anything about it till I watched that video earlier on, and I just thought it's the first time, like, when I, my impression of Margaret Thatcher was you couldn't, she was always very witty, she always put, she made men scared, basically. Yes. And then seeing this teacher, uh, this woman, absolutely and very articulate very well spoken very clear absolutely tear into margaret thatcher it was such a good interview they both held the ground they both done very very well oh yes yeah, she was very very good under fire she she appreciated in fact she rather enjoyed conflict uh -huh. you know she rather enjoyed conflict and 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 she got stuck right in there i mean there's absolutely no doubt about it she was very very good under fire as they say she had to wait. I mean, she was I different class to what we're dealing with nowadays in the House of Commons. I mean, yeah. if you look yeah. at a packed Commons with um, Lord Tony Pandy, George Thomas as the Speaker, and Margaret yes. Thatcher at Queen, Prime Minister's Question Time, wow! You know, you're really talking real politic, you know? I mean, nowadays it's really just a kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit of a farce, to be honest, compared with what it was. When you listen to Boris Johnson and the way some of his other uh, ministers act and speak and talk down and just be very disrespectful, you know, it's not the way politics should be. Well, there were some I, real heavyweights in there, you see, and she had the likes of Willie Whitelaw. Edward Heath, uh, Edward Heath had been a major in the Royal Artillery and was parachuted into uh, Suez in uh, 1956. So they kind of knew their stuff. But allegedly, Edward Heath took advice from Willie Whitelaw when he was thinking and appointing Margaret Thatcher as his education secretary. And he right. said to Willie Whitelaw, who was a bit of a father of the house, Willie, he was a, a real character. When I say a fair and tie, 
Uh, you know, I don't mean he was the father of the house. He was that kind of, you know, father of the house character. And um, he said, uh, he said, well, if you let her in, you'll never get her out. <laughs> and they let Margaret Thatcher in. And of course, she pulled a knife and stabbed Heath in the back in no time. Heath was out and she was in. Uh, you know, Minister. absolutely, and it took her. The city of London, you see, is a separate entity, so I uh -huh. think even the Queen goes to the city of London by invitation. And the city of London is where all the money is. This country doesn't uh -huh. have money, the investments are all in the city of London. And I think right. Thatcher was about to meddle with that, and that's why she just disappeared, uh -huh. you know. She was going to change it. Well, she was going to change yeah. it. Our campaign manager for staying on was the wonderful George Younger. Now, George right. was a great guy. He was the chairman of the Royal Bank when the Royal Bank was really doing business. And yeah. um, he, at 34, was Secretary of State for Scotland, and he was a former Argyll and Sutherland Highlander. Right. And, uh, yes, a remarkable man. And he was Youngers of Alloa, the Brewers. And uh, yes, yes, indeed, uh, Viscount Younger's son. And uh, and that was George, um, George Kenneth Hodson Younger. And uh, she turned to George in a meeting. Somebody said, but Prime Minister, what do ordinary people think of this? And she turned, she went, George, you're ordinary. What do you think? <laughs> and George was, George was, I would have said, an iron fist and a velvet glove, you know. So that was it. And that was the end of Thatcher. And she had to go in floods of tears after 11 years in Downing Street, which is no mean feat. So although we might be knocking Thatcher, let's not just blow her away because she was some character. I'll tell you one thing for her. For, was, was, how long was she Prime Minister for? 11 years. 11 years. For a lot of people here in Scotland, that would have been 11 years too many. Uh, well, I think so, yes. And for a lot of people in the north of England, and for a lot of people, I mean, her thing was she ended the Industrial Revolution, which had come on the back of the Agrarian Revolution. And she uh, ended that uh, after 150 years. But she, the, the technological revolution hadn't quite filled the void, and we're still running to catch up. To the state. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. The white heat of technology. Harold Wilson. Yep. Oh, goodness. Well, it's, oh, that if the video comes up, I'll, I'll share that link with you, Scotty. If Fantastic. It's and I just thought it was so interesting. Um, I think you'd really enjoy watching it between the two of them uh, debating it out. But I'm going to say thank you, Scotty, because I was a little bit annoyed prior to the phone call about what happened. I mean, I was in work. I'm, I'm professional as I can be in work. Yes. But it was really on my mind. <laughs> oh, know? absolutely. And I well understand it. Kareem, we'll see what the rest of the nation are saying. Thank you again, Scott. Hey, dinky doola, all the Thank best. You. Right, right. So, right, that's our Kareem. To the telephones. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello? 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 How are you? Very well. How are you? Yeah, I was just gonna say. I think you need to turn the background down there because we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. I was gonna say, I want to get a petition up, Scotty. I think that we should have a statue of Margaret Thatcher. Right. Where would you like this statue to be? In bloody Scotland. Right, whereabouts in Scotland? Oh, he's not telling us. He's run away, poor thing. Right, do you agree with that last caller that Scotland would benefit from a big statue of Margaret Thatcher? There we go. Do tell us what you think. Right, on to the chat, guys. Now, who have we got here? Right, this is fantastic. Evening, Scotty, says Big Daddy. Evening, Big Daddy. Hello, pal, says Thomas. Good evening, Sir Dinky Do. Celtic are playing a park head. Yes, that doesn't faze me one bit. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's uh, 
Tom from Shollins in Glasgow. Grant from Shollins, we love hearing you from Glasgow, didn't you, dear? Well, can I just say that half point that was on there about the statue of Maggie Thatcher? Yes. Just let us be clear, we won't be putting that at Shollins Cross anytime soon. So we'll not be seeing that at Shollins Cross. Is there anywhere else in Glasgow we might not see it, would you say? Absolutely. So what we'll do, we'll put this out to internationally and see what the response is. And Grant, That's a good call. So I, Marty, the reason I'm phoning is yes. to thank you because, you know, uh, you've said many times that uh, talk radio is by the death. Yes. It's been bought up by, uh, by millionaires who just don't believe in it anymore. So this is a fantastic forum for you to get people talking again and giving people an opportunity to speak. So thank you from all of us. No, not at all. Listen, it's a privilege and a pleasure because I believe that it is a fantastic genre and that the people want to talk. Oh, absolutely. Scotty, if you're in Shorelands, pop in and see us to that famous pub at Shorelands Cross, beginning with a G. I know it. I've spent many a great time in there in my day, I can tell you. Thank you for all you're doing. You're a star in Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo, sir. Lovely to hear from you. Love to Shollins. There we are, gentlemen from Shollins in Glasgow. He doesn't think we'll be having a statue of Margaret Thatcher in Glasgow. What a beautiful waning crescent moon tonight. 41.48. Visible illumination. I'm sipping fine wine in my garden. Watch it. Dave Deprave, that's excellent. They're Giles Bunnett, Scotty. Yes. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Uh, sneeze. David, how are you okay? David, Scotty? how lovely to hear from you. Yes, we're okay. This is amazing tonight. Aye. I, I mean, uh, okay, Maggie Fatch, I'm not against that in any such way, because I was quite young in the days. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Just let the lady rest. She's resting now. Do you she, know what I mean? She's resting well, now and let her rest in peace. Long time ago. It doesn't, what she done? She had the power. She done what she wanted to do. That was that. She did cause a few riots, but that's okay. Well, absolutely. But you see, what did you think of that funny old uh, doddy the Englishman there that came on and then he ran away when I asked him where would he like yeah, the statue? Exactly. Come on, he wants a statue of uh, Miss Maggie Thatcher. Yes. And he didn't, he didn't make sense, did he really? No, he you didn't. Know? And he swore, he used the term bloody Scotland. Oh, I found that very, very strange. You know, I don't know what he was on about. It's all petty. Bloody Scotland is petty. Imagine you know? saying something like that about our beautiful country. I know. But he's got, I can say something, but I'm not rude. Okay, I'm going to say, I know you won't cut me off. I think he was English, do you know? Okay. Yes. You know? Yes. He was. There's some English people against Scotland. New people. Well, they shouldn't be because we love England and we love the English people. We do. I love the English. I've been yes. in London 11 years ago. I yes. Yes. I mean, I'm sorry, but I just can't think that small. You know what I mean? I know. People are just people. Oh. You know, and, uh, I'm not, not, I'm not bossing. I'm selling something and to be, to be uh, a kind. Okay, David, that is so kind of you. It's not a problem because I just, I did anyway. the first payment tonight. I told you I picked up a new computer because otherwise I couldn't get the other one to work. And no, um, that's good. and and what I've good. done, I just paid the first payment the night there. So that is I so kind that. of you. You know, well, no, I'm hefty. I don't want them taking that away, you know. <laughs> Seriously, it's amazing. I, I, I did get you. You're trying to get bits and pieces and all these wires. Trying to get and stuff and together, all. David. What it is, as I say, if this was a television or radio station, it would be hundreds yeah. of thousands. It would be millions. Yes, but we are doing I it all it. on a shoestring. But it's That's working right. fine, you know. YouTube, we're on the TV. We're on the, on the TV, TV, we're on YouTube, you know, we're right across. <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's amazing. It's, it, and I can see your lovely wee tartan hat. I've got my wee hat on tonight, absolutely, the Glen Gary. The Glen Gary, son, the Glen 
The Glen Gary, we love it. David, that was so kind of you, and thank you very much. Well, I'll be doing that again in the future. No, 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 but that's just lovely, and no, thank no, you, as I say. I never ask for anything because, coin of the realm, right, coin of the realm, McClue yeah. accepts applause or derision on his merits. Well, there you go. So if, if I'm really, really good, I expect people to appreciate that. If I'm shecht, I expect people to appreciate that. Scotty, you look like family to me. I can speak to you. You can. You know? You can, and Anytime. you know you can. And I, I just, I just, you've been around for many, many years, and seeing, seeing the future, you'll be a ghost. It's, it's really going to be sad. You'll be yes. a ghost somewhere. I will be a ghost, <laughs> and I think I'm coming back as one of my own Labradors. Because they had such a great life lying in the couch there beside me, you know. Just amazing. And I used to look down and I would just give her a wee pat and the tail would thump, you know. Oh, my goodness. David, oh, wait till I tell you this. Somebody asked last night, they said, did I believe in life after death? I says, well, I think I've been here before, so I might be having life after death. Well, that's a possibility, Scott. You know, we might all be. I've got a ghost in my room, Scott. Yes. Right, all that stuff. Yes. Now, but see, last night I was a wee bit apprehensive because at my bedroom, so I slept in John's bedroom instead. Right. So John slept in my bedroom. Right. Uh, because this ghost is starting to kind of affect me. Yes. Now, do you, do, it does it sometimes off. give you a kind of cold feeling? Yes. 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 I'm frozen. Yes. My, my spine is chilling, Scotty. Yes. And I, I was trying to speak to Scotty. I'm serious, you know. That now, right? David, David, don't get fiat here. What to say is, oh, who are you and what yeah. can I do for you? I mean, I understand. I've lost a lot of family members. And yes. Friends. Could be one, one of them just... Well, uh, absolutely, just paying a wee know, visit. You know, as somebody, a ghost is really just an unsettled spirit. Some people yeah, say an unhappy course. spirit, but it's just oh, an unsettled yeah, spirit. And when you okay. reassure that spirit, you'll see things come and do. Oh, yes, of course, but my spine was frozen. Oh, yes. My whole body. I was trying to lie in the bed and I felt the ice coming up my toes. I'm not talking, Scotty, up my toes. Everything, Scotty. And I thought, oh, come on, try to get a sleep. It was, it was strange. And then the sun came up. When the sun came up, I thought I'd be a bit easy. Aye. I'm, I'm not usually scared. But it, it, that, that night, uh, that night, uh, that was like two nights ago, three nights ago, I just felt really strange when I was ghost. But as I said, I've ghost a lot of people. And also, they're sitting on my bed, Scotty. Yes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad. No, no, of I'm course not, you're not mad, for I, goodness I, sake. I, I, I keep putting my head up and I say, going to go off the bed, going to go back to your loved ones. <laughs> Seriously, Scotty. You know, Absolutely no. Do talk, talk to the ghost. As I say, I've just seen, met the one, but it was very yeah. strange. It was nothing to do with me. This one, it was just yeah. in in the house, you know. There you go. I can, I can imagine you've got a lovely big house, so there will be there will be ghosts there. Yes, the ghosts, the ghosts of Christmas past. And listen, Hi. it's lovely. Somebody said the other day, Sky McLean's still about. I can't believe I thought he'd been a home. <laughs> No, we don't know a thing. Just disappeared as far as I know. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? He may have passed. I don't really know. Absolutely incredible. Here's somebody saying, if you could be president of Scotland, I'd hire you. That's right, of course. And there's that's another one says, Dinky do, the Lord bless you and keep you. So might oh, it be. G Mac, thank you very much for that. Honestly, you've got a laughing parliament. Honestly, I could, but you would tell the truth. That's well, that's the problem. I think probably the chief whip would ask to see me and say, now, shut your mouth. <laughs> and you would say, oh, dinky-doo, you I'd say, dinky-doo, I'm not be doing that. <laughs> Lovely talking to you, David, and you Good take great you, care, you, and you, thank you again. Love you, my friend. Love you lots, Lala, and dinky-doo. Buy the new. Bye -bye. 
by the new what a great guy hi everybody who have we got on here uh, now i think oh yes you're live in scotty's phone in who's that hello hello can you hear us thank you do can you hear me scotty is that suzanne it's d Gurley. who is it d Gurley. Oh, Dee, how lovely to hear from you, Dinky Doo. Thank you, dear. I love our wee exchanges on the Facebook and all that. I know, I know. It's Fantastic, Dee, that's lovely to hear you. Are you enjoying the phone-in? I'm absolutely loving it, I'm loving it. It's um, just something listen. different, isn't it? Oh, we need it, we still need it, don't we? It's, people remember, need to be talking. I've told the radio people, you need yep. to put on the phone, oh, we don't know much about that, and blah, blah, blah. Just a lot of rubbish, you know. So you get no. fed up saying to them. Listen, you're never a lot of rubbish when you're on the radio, Scotty. And honestly, you're such full of wisdom. I love everything, everything um, all the chats. The banter's good as well. So sometimes it's good to have a wee um, troll or two. Sometimes. But, um, <laughs> a wee yeah, troller too is quite funny. I quite like that funny old English boy that says they want a, a bloody big statue, statue of Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> oh I thought that would be doing well. <laughs> I wouldn't go too, too well in Scotland, I don't think. That'll be doing well in the garden, Gad. Yep, yep, it will indeed. But I wanted to mention one thing. I remember, I've always um, listened to you speak. Oh, away in Scott FM days, and I've always. Do you know that uh, Scotty McClue is thirty years old in June? Amazing. Thirty Amazing. years. Oh, I'm forty six. Right? Yeah. But anyway, I remember phoning you one time, and you slagged me rotten, Scotty. Did I give you a <laughs> terrible, terrible time of it, do you? No, I didn't even realise at the time that you were, but it was a, it was it was actually Braveheart we were talking about. Oh, we're talking about and Braveheart. I, yeah, and you were saying brave fart. Brave fart. <laughs> I was saying, yeah, brave fart. It was just out of the pictures, and everybody was all up in arms about, you know, when they're coming out, and they're going, you know, having the English people and this, that, and the next thing, everybody's getting their backs up. But anyway, I had to come on, and we were just sort of about it, um, speaking about it. And I said, yeah, I want to speak about brave fart, brave fart. And he says, brave fart. And I'm going, aye, aye. Brave and fart. Everybody's laughing. And then I realised that he's got his flag in me. <laughs> no, no, we'd just be having a wee bit of a laugh, do you? A wee bit of banter. A wee bit of a laugh, a wee bit of banter. I mean, we'd about quarter of a million people per half hour joined us for that show. And I think that this will go very, very big again. I hope so. I hope so. Do you know, it might take a few weeks, it might take a few months. So what? Exactly, exactly. We just need to go with the flow. Do you know, it's something we like doing, all of us. So why not? You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. But I just wanted to say hello because you're, there, you're always there. Brilliant. I'm always in the background listening. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to say a wee hi. And well, I really, really appreciate it, my dear. I'll tell you that for nothing. Oh, and, it's, and I love your banter and I love all your carry on. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning my, my um, tomatoes, by the way. That's how they said this out, right? But, <laughs> but your tomatoes look absolutely gorgeous. They are so sweet and delicious, by the way. Yes, really lovely. absolutely. Yeah, so, um, yes. I've got the peppers going as well. They're so nicely. You've so. got the peppers. My father, you see, kept a lovely greenhouse. And at the height oh, of right. the summer, he was in and out oh. two or three times a day, opening lovely. windows, shutting windows, hosing oh. it down, drying it up, all that it's stuff. And you went in day. and the smell of the tomatoes and cucumbers. Lush, lush. And we used to go and get fresh bread and tomato sandwiches at night when we sat around the telly. Lovely. Just a wee Lovely. bit salt that. on them, you know? Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, the tomato sprinklers, I mean, we sprinkle salt. Oh, lovely. Definitely. Fantastic. But, um, yeah, but it is. And listen, it's been fantastic to speak to you tonight, and I'll let somebody else. A joy you. hearing love to you and your dear family, and dinky Thank do. Thank you so much. And dinky do to you too, and love to your family as well. You have a lovely weekend. I will. I'll, 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 I'll hear you tomorrow. Aye, you'll hear me tomorrow. Of course you will, because Friday night is the big one, oh, 10, 10 till 11. 10. That's right. That's oh, right. dinky doo dee. Thanks dinky again. Dinky doo. Nice speaking to night, you. Night, night, Angel. Take care. Ta ra now. What a top lady. That's lovely. 
Uh, that's a blast from the past. Uh, D used to phone Scott FM. Uh, Suzanne, I've got a rocket in the backyard near my pool. So there we go. There was a guy in court thinking he was a rocket, but I think the judge let him off. Uh, Jerry, you know I can't say anything here to defend myself. Scott, he can read your stuff. Why are you attacking me? Why are we attacking Dave Deprave? Scotty, me, myself, and I are going to donate £7.50 each. So there's £22.50 going towards your new equipment to make the show successful. Professor Numpteed, you've already been generous enough. You watch your pennies. What a lovely thing. TikTokers, what is going on here? Good evening to you, Scotty. Good evening to you guys. Your English is interesting. What country are you from, says leg worker? Yes, I'm from Scotland. The gun guards worse than Baghdad. Dinky do, Scotty. Hello, everybody. This is wonderful. I like that. Thank you so much to the beautiful TikTokers who have joined us live. Share this, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, share it live right now. Subscribe. Tap the bell. Subscribe. Tap the bell. If you're watching on TikTok, look at my TikTok bio, and just below it's a live hyperlink to YouTube. And you can join us in the phone in as well. Hi, 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 says everybody. Hi, hi, hi. There we are. I can't see any bullying at all, says Eb. Not a what? Numpty head. That's so kind of you. There we are. If anybody's feeling flush, we've had to buy some new equipment for the phone-in. And if you'd like to chip in, feel free to do so. We're not looking for anything substantial. But, um, you know, well, unless you're, unless you're feeling very flush, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClure. There we are. All one what? Better with Scotty McClure. Uh, the best place to place a statue of Maggie Thatcher is at the bottom of Loch Ness. <laughs> In that case, we may get a golden chance of witnessing the Loch Ness monster jumping out of the water. Absolutely petrified. That comes from Sunset Boulevardo. Boulevardo, didn't he do? When Scotland leaves the UK, will you be considered a separate language? Will Gaelic be considered that? You're live in Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello. Hello. Oh, they panicked. They need to grow a set, I say. Scotty, what's the name of the guy who used to phone up and sing your song? Uh, Paul Anthony Giuliani, that's, uh, used to phone us up and sing us a song. There were so many of them, yes. Big Hamish from the drum used to phone up and play the Muthi. You're live on Scottish phone in, who's that? Hello? Hello? Who's that? Oh, this is Duncan. Duncan? Yeah, I'm from London. Duncan from London. Well, why are you using yeah. a, a Newcastle accent in London? No, I'm not Newcastle. You're not from Newcastle? No, I'm from London. From London, fantastic. Oh, well, it sounded slightly jaudy. Have you lived in Newcastle, Duncan? Never. Never? Fantastic. And which part of London are you from? I'm from Wandsworth. Ah, lovely. Lovely to have you with us. Are you enjoying the show? Absolutely. Uh, I love the Margaret Thatcher statue. <laughs> we liked that one. I was think well, I was thinking that perhaps some, um, uh, another statue. How about a Michael Foote statue? We liked Michael Foote. Yes, I liked him. Very clever man. What about a Scotty McClure statue in Trafalgar Square? That's a good idea. I think that's an excellent idea. We could maybe take Lord Nelson down. He's going to have had his day. The, the trouble is, if you put a Scotty McClue statue in Trafalgar Square, you know what will happen. What will happen? You Everybody will, will gather and it, cheer it. You will get shit on. Never. Never. Oh, for goodness sake. So there you go. 
Uh, who have we got here? Good morning, Scotty. Thank you, do from Australia. Love your cat, Frank Meyer. Thank you. Yes, talk to the ghosts. They're really there. Be proud of what you say, says Dave Deprave. Never regret or retract your statement if you've been proved wrong. Jerry says, don't know what Jerry says. Can't see it actually. That's hiding. Yes, talk to the ghost. Uh, you're watching Scotty McClue, hashtag Floatai, the first lord of the internet. Back we go to the telephones. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? It's TikTok, Scotty McClue. How are we today, TikTok, sir? what a joy to hear you. Now, I popped up on TikTok earlier, and I think you joined me. Oh, yeah, I've got, oh, I, need to, well, I need to tell your listeners, Scotty, to get the notifications on, like myself, then that's how I managed to get onto all your TikTok lives, is because the notification pops up on my phone, I'm like, no matter what I'm doing, I have to go into Scotty McClure Live and watch the TikTok. What a top man you are, I thank you. The TikTokers are beautiful, beautiful people. Okay, you get the odd little troll, so what? You get them anywhere. I know, they're just detention seekers, Scotty, that's all they are. They are detention seekers. They can't handle the heat of Scotty McClure. They, they, would, they wouldn't survive one minute on the phone in. They won't come on the phone in, but I'm so glad you've come on the phone in TikTok. That's amazing. Yeah, well, you know, you've got to participate, especially when people are talking about rubbish about putting a Margaret Thatcher statue. Do you oh, think that didn't go down too well with the Scottish people? No, no. It's about, it's, imagine putting a Nicholas Sturgeon statue right outside Downing Street. How that go down with things? Well, I, that sounds like quite a good idea. I might actually take a look at that. But the best idea of the night was getting a Scotty McClure statue put in Trafalgar Square. Get a Scotty McClure. Yes, I don't think the pigeons would check on me. I think they'd fly upside <laughs> down. Right. There, I'm on TikTok here right now, and Noobs says, Brilliant, Scotty, being listening from the 80s. Isn't that beautiful? And Bob Nairs followed us. Do the Scottish like the Irish? Says Dutty. We adore the Irish. Everybody likes the Irish. You attract all walks of life, Scotty. That's what it's all about. Yeah, because we don't believe in all these so-called differences. People are people. Exactly. You know, and they're either smart or they're not. I mean, I posted this on a Glasgow Live site uh, today, and somebody goes, um, lots of things like, F's all this shit. <laughs> so I just I just said to them, join us. It's massive. Come and join us. You know what I mean? I mean, it might be a bit, I said, but there'll be no swearing. No. Well, there is swearing, but you characterize it in a way that, some people will understand what you're saying, Scotty, but we all the Scottish people know what you're saying. They know exactly what I'm saying, and so do you. Oh, yes. Lovely talking to you, TikTok. Thanks for all your support. You, I, I really appreciate it. And dinky do la. Top man. Fantastic. Now, what do we got there? Uh, my missus had a terrible nightmare about my dad. Two day, within two days, he died of a brain hemorrhage. Oh, every, I am very sorry to hear that, but she maybe had a premonition. That's a possibility. There we are. Now, who have we got here? I forgot to say that Dino the Doug's donating £7.52, so we're sending you £30. Wow! I wanted a hundred angels to send me seven pound fifty. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Scotty. Yay! Thank you, do. Thank you, do. Who's that? My name's Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. The Taylor from TikTok. Not from yeah, I suppose from TikTok. Yeah, there's maybe not the Taylor, but I'm Taylor. The Taylor, and you also post on here, Taylor. No, I've not posted anything. Have you not? Right, so it must be another tailor, but lovely to hear you. Lovely, man. I just had one question for you. Go on. Beans or spaghetti hoops? Ooh, that's a difficult one. That I'll have to go and think about it. Because there was a couple eating in a cafe in the village. And right. somebody said, what age are they? They were sharing a big plate of beans. And this guy said, he said, well, she's farty, and he's farty too. Hey! Hey, dinky-doo, Tillala! Dinky-doo, man. 
We love it, man. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, who was the guy who used to always say McClue in a strange voice of Scott FM? That was probably the boss, the managing director, Jimmy McClue. Uh, if you're wrong about foot, there we are. What are they saying about foot? There we are. Fantastic. Uh, she's had a few, Scotty. Yes, I remember them well. Jimmy is a Suzanne. Yes, indeed. That's right. To the telephones as quickly as possible, guys. Lots to talk about and so little time to do it in. Hello from Ireland, says Chian. Chian, lovely to have you from Ireland live on the TikTok. How good is this? Just amazing. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? It's me, myself, and I. Ah, Numpty Heed. Numpty Heed, I wasn't meaning for you to fork out. No, but I'm the secret billionaire. I'm, I know I'm, you're the secret the like secret billionaire and all that stuff. And you oh, never right. said, Ichi or Ochi at Brexit. No, listen, I, what I thought we could do was get 100 right. angels to do £7.50. Well, if you're two or three shots. I could maybe make up for it. You've done you've done more than enough already. You it's your it's your good offices that we got on air when we did. Well, Scotty, because me, myself and I and the dog wasn't a show we decided we'd all chip in. We'd all chip in. But I'll tell you something, yeah, but I also like the idea that the show is a hundred percent free. That there is no charge unless somebody is feeling flush and it suits them. I think so. Well, let's know our success. Absolutely. You know, this is this is for us. Aye, I've got a point to make, Scotty. Right, go on. Universal basic income. Yes. What do you think about that? Well, I like the idea of everybody getting something. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had to sign on, but they give you a thing like half a phone book, and you have to go and fill in every single thing about you. You know, how often do you clip your toenails almost? It's not quite that, but it's that kind of thing. And I think a lot of people will give up halfway through and think, what's the point? Aye, We're aye. not going to get it anyway. Do you know what I mean? Aye, I understand what you're saying, Sky. You know, and, and I think to myself, you know, if somebody's, it's right that the rest of us should look after somebody that's doing in their luck, you know. Aye, but can, I, can I put my point across a bit? Of course you can. Of course you can. Yeah. I'm going to, do you mind if I take a wee sip of tea? Aye. I want to talk about the benefits of universal basic income. Yes. Pardon the pun. <laughs> the benefits. The benefits. <laughs> I get it. Right. Now, do you think if we all were given £1,000 one every month, we'd be able to buy things? Well, your problem is it depends on your housing costs. I mean, you can't strip out housing costs because people need to live somewhere. And successive conservative governments have made it quite clear that they don't like social housing. Now, if you look at Scotland, these lovely four and a block or uh, two or three bed Double skinned brick, beautifully built 1920s after the First World War, land fit for heroes. Who sees? They're still wow. there. The pre-flabs and all that rubbish. With the what? The pre-flabs and all that rubbish. The? The pre-flabs. P-R-E-F-L-A-B. Aye, the prefabs. No, no, the prefabs. A lot of people love the prefabs because they're the rain back and front door. Because uh, on a single person, that's why they love the prefabs. No, some of them were huge families, no for single no, persons. Huge families and Massive prefabs. families. I think, You're was there no quite a bit of asbestos in them, no? No, then. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, though. The, the good thing about the universal income, right? Everybody will be buying something. Yes. So. So that means we're going to produce more. That means we have to slaughter more cattle for the beef. Yes. 
for the bacon, slaughter Mary this and slaughter Mary that for the haggis. You know, and then... Well, you see, it's all very well. You're going on about all your slaughtering, but the problem they've got at the moment is no, British me. people don't no, want I'm to work in, in the slaughterhouses. No, stop it. I'm not finished. Right. So we'll end up with a surplus that we're going to have to export it to other countries. Yes. Now you're and talking. The, the ships and the containers come into the use. Yes. We fill up the containers and send off the boats to uh, China and Australia with haggis. Yes. And then you add a wee bit of independence to that. Well, sorry, the economy. Yeah, somebody he'll sort it. Numpty he's your man. Well, you Wait, sorted out my economy, I'll tell you, and thank you for that. Uh, away you go. Away you weather. go and stop blathering a lot of nonsense. Yeah. Right, there we go. Hi, Scotty. It's David's partner, John Boy. We've put some money into your GoFundMe account. I'm also sharing your fabulous broadcasts on all social media platforms. You're a top broadcaster, Scotty. Let's get people sharing and sharing. John Boy, that is so kind of you. Love to you, beautiful people. Jimmy says, good question. So there we go. Now, what do we got? What do we got here? Scotland's magnificent. Wales is magnificent. England's magnificent. Ireland is too. That's why we're called Great Britain. No, no. We're actually called Great Britain. Good, good name. Because it's the big bit of the landmass that is Britain. There's no such country as Britain. Prefabs had gas fridges built into them when they built pre-war or after the war, was it? I don't know, Jerry. Gas fridges, yes. A gas fridge. I have heard of a gas fridge. What do you think of GM food now out of the EU? The rules aren't as strict. Yeah, but Kulelio, once you start that, you start upsetting the ecosystem. You see? Uh, because these things are not natural. See, I can tell you right now, if we lose the honey bean bees, we lose the people. We lose the population completely. So, you know, all the sort of nicotinoids and poisons over the years put into food production have clobbered a lot of the insect population. Now, there's a school of thought that the future is in um, farming insects. And once you get your head around it, it's protein. How about changing certain crops already? Yes, good afternoon, Scotty Dinkinu from Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Rue Daddy, what a joy to have you watching from America. Prefabs, yes, indeed, the prefabs. Oh, my goodness me. Look at the time. We have many similarities, human, music, art, and culture. We are a Great Britain. No other landmass has the word great in it. There's lots of greats in landmasses. Think about it, you know. Um, it was, pardon me, Vic. Yes, that's right. You're talking about people used to do the phone in. There we go. Wonderful stuff. Now, Scotty, I don't think there should be a statue of Maggie, but one of you at the borders welcoming our English neighbours. Yes, a statue of Scotty McClure at Gretna Green. There we are, on the, on the M74. Dinky-doo, Mr. Scotty McClure. More chances of Celtic winning the league than independence. Hunts, it might not be tonight, but you just watch the hoots. They may well surprise you. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? It's Raymond. His who? Raymond. Scotty. Raymond. Lovely to have you with us, Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo. Are you enjoying the show? Loving it. It takes me back years, Scotty. It takes me back years. I used to listen to you uh, early 90s. That's right. You'd be right 94 on Scott FM. I'm very young. Now, listen, Raymond, I've just had a tough paper round. Are you a Pfeiffer? Oh, no, no, no. No? I, I love the Falkirk, Ken Falkirk. Ken Falkirk, absolutely. Ken, it, the Falkirk traced. Aye. We love I Falkirk. I'm going to wear the Maggie Thatcher statue in the high street in Falkirk. Absolutely. You, you don't want one there but beneath the kirk, no? No, we'll no bother with the Kelpies. Right, they bother me all that. 
Thank you, dear Raymond. Lovely to hear you. What a top man. Absolutely amazing. Is your hat itchy? It does look like an inside nose. Beautiful. I'll show you on the inside. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the USSR had a land mass. Absolutely. Did you serve in the Royal Army? The Royal Army. That's an interesting one. Keep it coming, says Ebri. The Queen, of course, is the senior army officer. There we are, to the telephones. Uh, now, it's 55. We've got five minutes, right? I've always wondered about the hat you're wearing. What the father Glen Gary is. There we are. They were worn, actually, in battle. If you look at the Argyles going into Aden in 1968, they all wore their Glen Garys, 700 Glen Garryed men. And the call came sweeping down the Glen. Dinner, stare and stand. Get your rifle in your hand. The Argyles are moving again. There we are. On yourself, Scotty boy. Absolutely, Brian. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, who have we got here? Um, <coughs> pardon me. Fantastic stuff. And I'll tell you who was in charge that night was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Colin Mitchell, christened Mad Mitch by the press, but he was far from mad. There we are. Go on yourself, Scotty boy. Absolutely. What an amazing show tonight, guys. Just wonderful. Hello from Tobermory in the Isle of Mull. David, I know it so well. I used to play down at the steps at the pier there, just uh, below the Mishnish. And um, the wee Loch Bui would come in. There we are. She'd been at Kilchon or Kalachon. Cal Vyland. You're live on Scotty McClure's phone in. Who's that? Hi, Scotty. Namti, are then... you using your second call? Oh, I just want to ask you, what right have you got to wear that hat? Every right. Because oh, if you were wearing a policeman's hat, you'd be pulled up. No, for, uh, being no, no, this is ball. my Glengarry. Any yeah, Scotsman, any Scotsman can, can wear a Glengarry. Ball. Any no, Scotsman no, can wear a Balmoral. And my own badge, look. Uh, there you are. There you are. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, uh, to the telephones. Good night, Scotty, and everyone says, Kareem, Kareem, good night, and God bless. Lovely to have you with us. What a great show tonight, guys. Just incredible. I love learning new. Thank you for the new knowledge. Not at all, Abe. Dinky do, Scotty McClure from New York. Can you do an American accent? Yeah, I can do an American accent. I'm actually from the Bronx in New York. So you have to be careful how you talk to me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And keep on the sidewalk. These roads are a bit dangerous around here. Uh, my wee boy gets called Dinky Doo and the family gets so excited when you say Dinky Doo. Well, I say Dinky Doo to him right now. Fantastic. Follow us as soon as you can, guys. We're very, very busy. I think I'm going to have to dash off. We're going to have to say good night to our beautiful TikTokers. Thank you for joining us. Remember to stay fabulous, you beautiful, beautiful people. Mwah. And subscribe and tap the bell on the YouTube channel. Get onto that now. You'll see it below my bio on TikTok. Get onto the TikTok videos and fill your boots. Yes, go away, says Chasable. You go away as well, Chasable. Good night, Scotty. You're no very Chasable. That accent was terrible. I think it was excellent. Yes, my native accent, my fellow Americans. Fantastic. Dinky do, Scotty McClure. ta -da -da. We love it. Right, that's our TikTokers have had to dash off. God bless them, I say. Beautiful, beautiful people. That's it. See you, everybody. Fantastic. Jerry, did you see the shout out last night? Scotty, that was more Irish. Well, of course, a lot of Irish in the Americans. There's no doubt about that. I'm going to say night, night. Thank you for the chat. See you tomorrow. Tara la. Tara dee love. And you take care of yourself. And as I say, love to your family. We've got another 30 seconds. I thought my accent was outstanding. There we go. What do we got here? I meant to say, Scotty, we should be saying happy haircut day. You're looking very smart. I thank you, Dinky Doo. Good night, Scotty and everyone. Go on yourself, Scotty boy. Nobody can agree as many are stubborn with chips on their shoulders. 
Dave Deprave, do you have a chip on your shoulder or are you chip free? I say. There's so many people with chips on their shoulders. Guys, I'm going to have to dash. Thank you so much for watching the internet phone in. I am Scotty McClue, and I say dinky do to every one of you. Have a gorgeous, safe night. Take care of your dear selves, and ta-da, lads! Dinky do!